16th century, Scotland found itself amidst an epic invasion war. This invasion began after the death of King Alexander III. His successor, the Norwegian Princess Margaret, passed away sadly on her journey to Scotland. Her death sparked off the disputed succession, which led to the Wars of Scottish Independence. In the 1200s, England led a successful invasion, and King Edward I began to assert his authority over Scotland. He took the centerpiece of Scottish kingmaking, the Stone of Destiny, back to England to signify the end of Scotland's independent monarchy. He left behind garrisons and governors to form the English administration to take over Scotland's affairs. There was an emergence of a harsh foreign rule with increased demands of service and money towards commoners. Christianity was the main religion followed by the Scottish. There was a parochial structure based around local churches. There were large numbers of new monastic foundations due to the reformed monasticism. Medieval Scotland ran under a diocesan structure, which meant that they were under the pastoral care of a bishop. Bread was the main source of carbohydrates. <clears throat> and soup or stew was drank alongside with the bread. Soup was called potage because it was made in a large pot over the fire, which contains vegetables, grains, herbs, spices, and fish. The normal people ate more exotic and expensive meat, such as venison and swans, and for the drink of the day will be French wine and ale. For the commoners, mostly they will be eating grains such as oatmeal, millet, fish, byproducts of animals. Meats were only eaten during the winter. And for the drink of the day, it would be weak beer because of the contaminated water. Haggis was a popular Scottish dish, which was made of innards and oatmeal cooked in the stomach of sheep. And sugar was only consumed by the wealthy, as it was too expensive. Hi! So, as for ceremonies and rituals, you need me, the pastor. I'm here for every type of events. Um, weddings, ceremonies, funerals, everything. Me, as a pastor, we witness the ceremony with the word of God. Every time in the wedding ceremonies, brides will wear veils, no matter they're rich or poor. And in happy events like birthdays, victories, people dance with partners. And in funerals, corpses were wrapped in cloths and were buried underground. There were no caskets, you know, and only gravestones were used. That's why. In medieval Scotland, there was a social hierarchy. And just like anywhere else, there was the upper and the lower ranks of society. In the upper ranks, there was the military aristocracy, whose status was largely dependent on their ability and willingness to fight. This was the social hierarchy. There were many social norms that were prevalent in medieval Scotland society. One of them was that the upper class was indefinitely superior to the lower class. A girl's purity was very important. When she lost her chastity without getting married, that was seen as taboo and she would be ostracized from society. There was also the caber toss, which was an event where commoners threw rocks or stones to compare and show their strength. There was a lot of Roman architecture in Scotland, and this is from the remains of the Roman Empire. So there were statues and temples. The main construction materials for buildings were hay, stone, and tree branches. <laughs> Much of the landscape in Scotland was wide grassland and hilly terrain. The main language used in medieval Scotland was Scottish Gaelic, uh, but the other writing systems include Brythonic, Scots, French, and Latin. So the clothes that people wore varied according to social strata. For the rich, most of their clothes were made of animal skin. Commoners such as merchants, farmers, and peasants were often untidy and wore ripped and ragged clothing and stuck to colors that were neutral and dark, and mainly brown. <laughs> and for nobles, they dressed elegant, they looked clean and fresh. Face paint symbolized bravery, 
courage, strength, especially during war. The main transportations at the time were horse riding and by foot. As for the weapons, Scottish used uh, tombs, axes, knives, shields, and spears. And for cutlery, they were mostly made out of stone or iron. And mostly, they would use bowls to eat. Scottish people had homes with only one room, and so there was only one source of uh, fire in which it was used for heating, lighting, and cooking. Men and women in medieval Scotland often spent time in the outdoors doing activities such as sharpening their knives for men and domestic work such as going to markets for women. Brides of all social classes wore a veil to signify her chastity. Marriages between men and women within the lower class, that is merchants and peasants, were not grand. A priest was always present due to the significant Christian influence within a medieval Scottish society. A crucifix had to be present to symbolize the Holy Trinity. Couples practice an act called hand fasting, whereby a piece of folded cloth is placed and tied around the hands of the couple. This is to symbolize the binding of the couple together in matrimony. Prima Nocta was a legal law enforced by King Edward I of England in an attempt to breed out the Scots instead of fighting them out. This right was the privilege of feudal lords and English nobles to sleep or have sexual relations with a woman on the first night of her marriage. refusal could not be taken lightly, and she is killed with a single slash of the sword to her bare neck. The ancient Celts had very deliberate rituals regarding death. The woman's body is thoroughly cleansed, washed, and then later wrapped in a burial cloth. The custom of the wake also allowed for corpses to be laid out for several days. Some stayed with the body 24 hours a day, and this was to prevent the devil or other evil spirits from taking away the soul and body. Bodies would be put into minutely measured tombs or resting places such as stone chambers or simply covered with stone or earth. Sometimes personal objects were buried with them. 